I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, but it's kind of a complicated answer. When I was 14, I moved up to Ocala, Florida, and that's where my whole family lives. Well, and then I came to Nashville. Been here for a while. I went to a Brooks and Dunn concert, and it was the first concert I ever went to. And I listened to Ronnie Dunn sing, and I saw the fans and I saw the crowd, just how they were responding and connecting to him. And I was like, that's what I want to do for a living, right there. So what brought me to Nashville? When I was a senior in high school, I was rolling down our like quarter mile dirt road going out of the farm, heading to school. And I'll never forget, I heard Keith Urban on the radio. And I realized in that moment, this song, You'll Think of Me, kind of connected all the dots for me. Couldn't wait to get home, tell my parents, I figured out what I'm gonna do, I'm moving to Nashville. And my parents, their first thing was, well, what college are you going to? So I didn't really think about that. And uh, I found a music college up here called Belmont University, and that was kind of my ticket to Nashville. It's been a long journey for me in Nashville. I've actually, this is my third record deal. I signed one earlier on with Sony. After I left Sony, I ended up meeting a guy named Mike Busby, who changed my life, honestly, in a lot of ways. And we ended up getting, uh, creating some music and getting signed to Warner Brothers. So that was my second record deal. After the pandemic happened, and all the dust settled, I ended up leaving Warner Brothers, and Jay DeMarcus called me, and he said, uh, hey man, I'm starting a, a record label, and I need a flagship artist, do you wanna be it? And if you guys don't know who Jay DeMarcus is, he's the bass player for Rascal Flatts, which was a huge influence for me. So it's still weird to me that his name is in my phone and we've become really good friends. So long story short, I ended up signing a record deal with Jay DeMarcus, and I am now currently on Red Street Records and having the time of my life. <laughs> so my first publishing deal was straight out of college. I ended up doing a showcase at Belmont called Best of the Best, and there was a guy named Dan Hodges there who had a publishing company. I ended up signing with him. It was kind of a smaller boutique company. Gave me the, the time and the room to kind of grow and stretch my wings as a writer and kind of hone my craft. That's kind of where it all began. My favorite part of songwriting, hands down, is when we are able to put into words how people feel when they can't put it into words themselves. And that to me is the coolest moment when you're standing on stage and you see these people connecting with your song or my phone blows up because my friends you know, are texting me and they're like, oh my gosh, that new song. Anytime that people can connect to it, that's my favorite part. There's a bunch of different ways uh, to write a song. You can start with the lyric, the idea, the melody, the vibe. Um, my favorite way to start is to spend all the time on the front end finding the right idea. That idea that you can connect with, that hits me in that place that like makes me feel like I care and it matters. And so starting with the idea and then building out the melody and the vibe that kind of uh, helps translate that and then filling in the pieces with the lyrics. There's a couple songs that I wish I was <laughs> in the writer's room when they were written. One of them that comes to mind is You'll Think of Me, the Keith Urban song. I think that that song is so beautifully said and has such great imagery. Um, I really feel like when I listen to that song, I can feel all the emotion and I can be in that spot. My other favorite song is a song that Sam Hunt actually wrote and Billy Currington recorded and it's called We Are Tonight because it's an anthem. It's amazing. Oh, my dream collaboration. It's, that's a tough one for me. Uh, I think in country, it would be Keith Urban, hands down. Like he's, to me, one of the best vocalists, uh, musicians, entertainers. I think he'd be amazing. He was a huge influence on me. Out of country, it'd be Brian McKnight. I mean, that dude taught me how to sing. He sings different than anybody I've ever heard and uses his voice in such a cool way. I'd love to collaborate with him one day. I mean, it starts all the way back, sitting in the back seat of my mom's station wagon in between my two older brothers. She was always blasting George Strait or Vince Gill. And so that was kind of the foundation, like the bedrock of country music for me. Uh, Vince kind of taught me how to sing. George taught me how to write a lyric. And then when I got a little bit older, you know, I started diving into other genres, R&B and hip hop and Brian McKnight and Usher and Boys to Men, Casey and Jojo, all that kind of stuff really um, helped me kind of figure out like melodic phrasing and how to use my voice. 
I think my hope as an artist um, and a songwriter is that listeners, fans, you know, people that are listening to the music, they connect with what I'm saying. They connect with the songs that I'm putting out because one of the biggest things for me is writing from experience and also writing from a place of vulnerability and a place, you know, like from my heart. So it's really exciting when I can see people connecting to that, changing their day or changing their mood, you know? Uh, Salt, Lime and Tequila was a big one. I got a ton of messages that were like, yo, I listen to this song when I have a bad day. And that to me is one of the most rewarding things as an artist and a songwriter. One of the biggest things that happened early on in my career was meeting Kelsey Ballerini and sitting down in the room and getting to write some songs with her and landing her second number one as an artist, a song called Dibs, I was a co-writer on. And that was an incredible experience, especially getting to share it with my friends. And then, you know, as an artist on the artist side, I've been putting out music for a while and Salt, Lime and Tequila is probably the biggest success I've had uh, up until this point. And it was such a cool kind of introduction into being an artist and having a little bit of success because it's so authentic to me growing up down in Florida and growing up like in the Keys and, and fishing and just all of that. And it, it had such like a, a, I don't know, kind of carefree, beachy, islandy vibe. And so I, I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> Last year I put out an EP called Slow Down Sunrise and it had Salt, Lime and Tequila on it and it was kind of a whole vibe of that EP. This year, the new music that I'm coming out with is, it's music that I've kind of been creating for years and I'm finally like figuring out a way to say it in my own way and be my own artist and represent myself in my music. And I'm really, really excited for you guys to hear it. I mean, it's a departure from the last EP in a really, really good way.